So you've empowered them, you've given them the responsibility to update as they find things. That is, thank you, yes. they For our control <laughs> freaks out there, how are you about letting go of those types of things? Do you feel like you have to go back in and check it after they change things or, or what happens? I would say no, I am not, I'm not a control freak. For the, for the control freaks out there, I would say let it go. <laughs> let it go. I mean, if there's a problem, yes, then you, then you address it or if they have questions, yeah. then you address that. And I just think that like trying to control the minutia is not mm -hmm. where my energy is best spent. I am not that personality. That mm -hmm. isn't my strong point. And so let let me stay in my lane. We say that all the time. Stay in your lane. Stay uh -huh. in your lane. And yes, we're all, we're cross trained and we all do things. But sure. you know, do what you do. And I I think that that idea of like keeping blinders on, you know, just I just need to focus on what I do and what mm -hmm. I do well, and I know what my strengths are. Right. And you know, how do you do that? Well, you you take strength finder tests and you do the disc personality, <laughs> and you you just really explore that. And, and then, contemplate when you're happiest. Yes. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I could be better about that. I don't know if I do that very well. <laughs> thank you for the reminder. <laughs> okay, so so we're, we've got the procedures manual piece as part of the onboarding. At yeah. what point do you introduce, it seems like core values play a very strong role in how you operate as a business. If yeah. that's not a concept I'm familiar with when I'm coming on the team, how do you fold me into that yeah. so that I'm on board? Um, it starts even before you're hired. Like, okay. you know, that's one of the things is that, you know, we've got a, I also kind of streamlined the hiring process, you know, where we've mm -hmm. put the ads out there and then the first call comes to, you know, my operations manager who has a list of questions that she goes through, she or he, now we have Gavin, so, <laughs> you know, to see if it's even going to be a fit at all. And then I get in and we talk about it. Then they come in the office. We have them do a disc personality profile test. Okay. Um, we have them do a little bit of, uh, in the past we've done like here's some information about a, pro a, a property that we have coming on you know how would you see a flyer going or you know depending on the mm -hmm. you know we're actually having them practice a little bit and then I think one of the main things we do is we have them come to one of our team meetings and we talk about we have our you know our our core values um, our mission word is passion and they all all those letters mean something else and don't ask me what they all mean now because I will forget but <laughs> But just we can get them from you and you guys will have them available as a download from the newsletter. There we go. But, you know, just talking about how our, you know, our overall mission statement is that, you know, whether you're buying or selling in Summit County, we know the most important transaction is yours. Nice. And, and so we talk so much about, you know, having a servant's heart that, you know, it's my pleasure attitude. We just, in that meeting, we go around, we say what the core values are, mm -hmm. we, inter you know, we just talk a little bit about it, mm -hmm. and then we are also asking them what they think and how they, what, what does that mean to them in their world before they even start. So it starts before we even go. And then I have everyone in, on the team has a part in the training, and that's, I just think they, they are, that's invaluable to get to know people and you know, just here, here's your part. Like you're, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna work with you on the contract part. Here's mm -hmm. what you're gonna need to know. Um, you really bring your team in to all parts of the process. I hear they're in the interview process. I hear they're in the training process. What prompted you to make that decision as a leader? I guess because I felt like we, I do want a collaborative team. I don't want mm -hmm. to be, I'm, I, I'm the leader, I'm the rainmaker, but I'm not here, I'm, I'm here. You know, we're, we're all working together. We're, we say it all the time, we're collaborative, not competitive. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I do know that my job as the leader is to be the one who, you know, shimmies up the palm tree and is like, you know, looking around for any, you know, any problems or things I see coming on the horizon and mm -hmm. evaluate whether it's something we need to do, make decisions about that. Yeah. But then the most important thing I do is like rally the team to make sure that we're all on board. And, you know, so that's, I guess that's just part of who I am and who I want my team to be. So it's having them very involved too. Collaborative versus competitive. I, I love that you encapsulated it that way. <clears throat> what indicators do you have when it's crossing back over into competitive and what actions do you take to get them mm. back to being collaborative? Um, that's a great question. And I would say 
so you know so we do work as a team um, and that that means that you know if you're a buyer specialist and you're on vacation the other buyer specialists take care of your customers and show them property and write a contract if necessary and mm -hmm. you know all of that and then we do have like a little mini referral system that goes on with that and it, okay. I say mini it's very detailed like if you if I show property for you then I'm gonna get you know 10 percent and if I write a contract it's 15 or whatever it is mm -hmm. and I can I can send that to you too okay, <laughs> just because just how it, how it breaks out with who's helping whom and um, so that's that's one way to just so it doesn't get icky so it doesn't get like well I helped you the whole time you were on vacation and you didn't help me yeah and I got paid for it so mm -hmm. so it there is that that piece of the puzzle um, I think another thing that that happens that just keeps it collaborative and I don't know that all teams do this I'm, I'm the listing specialist I work with mostly with sellers and but I but the, the buyer specialists can work with sellers too they can take listings okay. especially if it's their past customers who want to work with them anyway right so that's that's what just makes it easy there's that's just an easy thing that's what you do and there's no like is it mine is it yours whose is it have you always allowed them to do listings or did you make that shift at some point it I guess I kind of grew into it a little bit you know okay. so um, in the beginning it wasn't it wasn't well defined and what I did was I just see. define it which I think setting the expectation right like yeah you keep ha keep keep attention to that person who bought that condo because when they want to sell, you're going to be the one to sell it. And I still do a ton of, I mean, all of our team marketing gets blanketed out to all the past customers. 